It's um, here. You're live. Okay. Um, I'd like to call this regular meeting of the governing board to order and let the record show that all members of the governing board are present. The district is represented by Ms. Glass, <laughs> Ms. Siegel, Ms. Stone, and Mr. Luhan is assisting us as well tonight. Um, may I have a motion to adopt the agenda, please? So moved. Been moved? Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Um, we'll now join in the Pledge of Allegiance, and following that, we will have a moment of silence. The mother of Mr. Mike Davis, a custodian at Buena High School, passed away, and we will remember her in our moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Item four, board meeting minutes not previously approved. Minutes of the regular meeting of March 24th, 2020 and the minutes of the superintendent search session on March 24th, 2020. May I have a motion to approve those? So moved. Been moved? Second. Seconded. Were there any corrections or additions, ladies? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0. Information only items, um, summary of current events, Ms. Glass. Uh, so we have been, well, hello everyone. It seems like it's been an eternity since yes. I got to see you last time. Um, so we uh, have been really busy serving food Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, Kelly and, and Chris has been at the high school. Kelly's been at Carmichael. I've been at all of the sites. It has um, probably been one of my biggest blessings to date to go and help with um, with the food um, pickup, and we're also now delivering food on the buses to um, about seven different sites, and three buses are going out. Um, so we're really excited about that. Probably serving about between twelve and fifteen hundred meals a week. Wow! wow. So um, we did see a significant decrease this week um, and the end of last week. Um, because I think because there are a lot of organizations within the community that are now serving food for our families, which is really great. Uh, and so we're um, adjusting to that. But it's really been so nice to get to talk with families and grandparents and see kids when they come through the line. So that's been a lot of fun. Um, we I am currently working on the 21st Century Grant in that contract with the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, something that um, we're going to be doing on Friday is having a Teacher of the Year um, kind of a convoy. Uh, so we're going to be going to each of the houses of the teachers that were nominated for Teacher of the Year. And uh, Ms. Romo is leading that and delivering them a little goodie bag and congratulating them. Uh, and so that's going to take place on Friday since the ceremony is not going to be happening for them. So everything else I have, I'd like to share um, during the last thing I have during Chris's budget presentation or the, you. your discussion about the budget. Thank you. All right. And celebrations and recognitions. Ms. Siegel, the employee of the month. Yes, our employee of the month is Claudia Flores. Claudia is a one-on-one -on -one paraprofessional at Wachuca Mountain. And um, Claudia's nomination says that she is a bright and positive person who gets along well with everyone and ded dedicated to do whatever is necessary for her students. And I know it, it's always the most exciting time for me to have our employee here and be recognized, but I know that Wichuca Mountain made a big deal about it when it was announced and we'll be sending her certificate and her pin in the mail. So 
Uh, congratulations to Claudia. We're very happy to have her in our district. Thank you. Uh, governing board members, I, I'll take the privilege of saying that I am so proud of our district, everything that has been happening. Um, I have been just amazed at how hard people are working and how effectively. So thank you to every single member of our district. Ditto. I, I agree with everything you just said. Everything's been going smoothly for me as a parent with my two kids. I've had a lot of contact from my kids' teachers um, and all the, we've been hearing all the plans that you've got uh, administration um, and staff has been making kind of as we uh, learn how to do this and, and it's been very much appreciated. Um, yeah, so thank you. Okay. Ms. Johnson? Yeah, I'm going I like it when we agree. I, <laughs> um, I just want to say, tell everyone to, you know, be as safe as possible. And the same thing, I appreciate all that the teacher and the staff have done to help and ensure and feed our children. And that's all I have. Great. And Ms. Mims. Um, a big thank you to the staff and the administration and the teachers and everyone who are doing the best they possibly can in a very difficult situation. For all of our students and it's wonderful that we're able to give them meals and teachers are in contact with their kiddos and things are going as smoothly as it possibly could in a really really bizarre situation so i don't think any one of us could have predicted well this is how we're going to end this school year and so i'm looking forward to the plans for graduation for our kids and things that will be upcoming for them and getting ready for next year thank you all right, we're on to item six, action items. The consent agenda uh, includes personnel actions report, ratification of vouchers, fundraising list, and approval of surplus property. Do I hear a motion regarding the consent agenda? So moved. Been moved? Second. So moved and seconded that we approve the consent agenda. Any questions or comments, ladies? Nope. In that case, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0. We now move on to item on our addendum, 6B-01, discussion and action contract negotiation consideration for the position of district superintendent. It is recommended that the governing board discuss and consider candidates that have interviewed for the position of district superintendent and select one candidate for an opportunity to enter into contract negotiations for the position of superintendent. Is there a motion? I make a motion that we um, enter in, the negotiate, in negotiation with Dr. Eric Holmes for the position of superintendent. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved and seconded. Any discussion, ladies? I do want to add a thank you to Dr. Nick Clement from Arizona School Boards Association for the immense amount of support he has given us, the professional guidance, but always keeping his own opinions to himself. We could not have done this without his assistance. I'm very grateful. Um, no other comments? In that case, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0. 6B02, discussion and possible action, appointment of governing board member for contract negotiations. It is recommended that the governing board discuss and consider authorizing a member of the board to work with legal counsel in negotiating the new superintendent contract. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion that um, Ms. Williams be appointed uh, or be our authorized member of the board to work with legal counsel in negotiating the new superintendent contract. Thank you. And, uh, Second. Yes, we do need a second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any objections, complaints? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5 0. Thank you, ladies, for all the hard work. Um, we have specific items of district business, policy considerations for first reading new policies. It is recommended that the governing board discuss and take action to review on first reading the following new policies as recommended by ASBA. IHAL, teaching about religion. IKAA, tests and examinations. IKB, homework. IKC, class rankings, grade point averages. IKD, 
Honor Rolls, JIB, Student Involvement and Decision Making, JIBA, Student Government, JICE, Student Publications, JIG, Married Students, JKB, Detention of Students, JLD, Guidance and Counseling, JN, Student Volunteers for School and Community, and JP, Student Donations and Gifts. Ms. Glass? Uh, so per, uh, per district policies, BG, school board policy process, and BGC policy revision and review, the governing board must keep district policies up to date in order to maintain compliance with changes in legislation as well as to allow for consistent board action and administrative decision making of the district. Administration recommends acceptance of the reading, so of the first reading, so the policy may be adopted on second reading in accordance with current policy BGB. May I have a motion? So moved. Been moved and? Second. Been moved and seconded. Questions, comments? I have some. Okay. So I would like to look at JIB, um, JN, and JP. Um, in what sense? Are you concerned with the rationale or the, co I know you have the content. Yeah. Okay. I am concerned with that. Um, These are all new policies recommended by ASBA. Yes. Are you asking that those items be pulled? Or? I am. I'm asking that those items be pulled for discussion. Okay. Which um, ones again? So JIB, JN, and JT. Can we discuss them now? We're, um, we don't have to pull them for discussion. We're okay. discussing them now. Okay. So JIB, what is your concern with um, that one? Student involvement and decision making. Um, okay, guys, I'm sorry, but I got to find this one to read it exactly how it's stated. Page 47. Is it 47? Mm -hmm. At least on my computer. Yeah. That's where that's on And Mrs. Williams, may I yes. just remind that this is just the first this reading the first so that reading. we can have okay. these discussions and then um, get additional information so for, it might for the be, next time. It might be more it. appropriate if we take a list and bring it for discussion next time. We I, that's what I thought. Okay. Well, would cool. No, no, it would be better if yeah. we discuss it now. Okay. And then if we have, if you have like additional questions or changes yeah. or information that you need, then we can bring that back the next time. Okay. So what? Okay. One thing I was going to request, typically, and I looked on the website and I couldn't find it. There's a like a rationale document explaining why does that exist for no. Okay. That's so, only when there's legal changes because sometimes there's like some document that sort of explains why they're recommending the sure. changes that they make. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. When there's the policy advisory, then mm -hmm. then we have that. Um, but we don't have that for these because these came to us during the policy review with with Mr. Hyland, oh. um, and we did not have these policies in place. Um, and so they that's how we learned of, of these policies. So you'll see that there's another with yeah. policy yeah. advisory later on, we broke it up so yeah. that it would be a little bit easier to work through. Okay. Well, I know on this on JP, student donations and gifts put some limitations on situations that might have students feeling coerced into making gifts. Correct. And this is to prevent them being pressured from giving gifts to teachers or to activities. Correct. And so it's a protection for students. Yes. The volunteers also is a protection for students in making sure that they do not enter into school volunteer activities that would be damaging to their academics mm -hmm. or counter to learning processes that any school volunteer would be something that was in support of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember a, I did not have any concern with the JIB policy, the decision-making. Have you found it no. yet? Yeah. 
So it's not so much with the JIB with the decision making. I actually kind of think that, that that's okay. But um, the one for student volunteers for school um, and community that they're to check that the person asking them to volunteer or to check with the teachers and principals. Yes. Um, I I don't see. I mean, I think that's something that the student that the parent and the student should should um, decide on. I don't think that there's a, that. So is it saying that as a policy that kids cannot volunteer unless they check, unless that person checks with their so this teacher is for during or their the principal? School day. Huh? This is for the school day. Oh, during the school day. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's what makes it a little bit different. It, this is during the school day. This isn't like Saturday, Sunday. I'm, Unless it's with one of our clubs, and then uh -huh. um, and then they do typically check with parents and the principal to make sure that there's nothing else going yeah. on. But this is for the school day. Okay, I get okay. And they're encouraged to check. Yeah. Yes. And so even still, that even during the school day, it would be something to me that the parent that should be the parents um, under the parents' discretion. So they, they also have to sign a permission slip, giving okay. permission to attend just like any other activity that we have. Those processes don't go away because of this. This just makes sure that everyone knows if if we're going to have, um, just say, for instance, a Rotary Club come in and ask to have students come and volunteer to help um, paint one of their rooms and help with the remodeling of their facility, um, that if that's happening during the day, they have to get permission from the principal who then gets permission from the parents. It's a it's the same processes that we use with all other activities. Okay. We don't take kids out of school without their parents knowing. Okay. And does it say in here that this is all during the school day? That's the only place where we would have any jurisdiction with this policy. That's language that could be inserted if it was felt to be necessary, I guess. Yeah, I kind of think that it should. Okay. I think that if you, again, I'm going to share with yeah. you that you should leave the policies as they are copywritten policies and write regulations to go with them if you want a specific process to make sure that we are following that process. So a regulation written to support this might include something like a sample of a parent permission slip mm -hmm. and stuff like could that. It could have an exhibit. It could have first this, then yeah. this. But okay. I mean, it's outlined here okay. in the policy. But yeah, we certainly can do that. Okay. But that way we keep the copywritten policy intact to mm -hmm. preserve legal compliance and mm -hmm. things like that and then have more specificity in the yes. regulations, which are, we know we need to keep those it just keeps them separate yeah. for legal yeah. compliance purposes right anything else Mr. Um, you had shared a question about student donations yeah yeah, yeah. JP. JP. Um, it says students shall shall not be solicited to purchase books or other merchandise except for material approved by the district for use in the classroom so would this mean that they wouldn't be able to Buy books for the book fair? No, no, this is, um, so say a teacher would like for them to read a different book than what the district curriculum calls for and what's been approved. Uh -huh. um, they cannot be asked to purchase that. They cannot be asked to purchase that book. Okay. Or you can't have a teacher saying, boy, I wish I had X for my classroom and then putting pressure on students to take a collection to buy whatever X is. Well, I mean, technically the students are not buying anything. They don't have a job. I mean, the, the money is actually coming from the parents. Well, even so, it, it prevents that kind of pressure. Okay. okay. And then this, if you read the top, it's 
it starts with students shall be discouraged from collecting many blah, blah, blah for the school or for faculty members. Right. I think that's what sets it aside from, yeah. you know, purchasing something yeah. at a yeah. sponsor. So does it mean that when... So you're not purchasing, it's for, if it's specifically for the school or the faculty. You know what I mean? Versus... Right. So does it stop, does, does it stop them from buying the, like Christmas no. stuff for the kid teacher and stuff like that? But it, what it does stop is me pressuring you to give me $10 so that I can buy Barb a Christmas gift. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't allow that. Okay. It doesn't prevent any individual action. No. It prevents no. coercion yeah. and pressure. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion on those items? In that case, all in favor of accepting these on first reading, say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes 5 0. The second one, item two, is policy removal consideration. It is recommended the governing board discuss and take action to remove the following policy as recommended by ISBA IKACA parent conferences. And again, per your district policy BG and BGC, um, we have to keep our policies up to date. Um, and I just would like to present this policy to you um, on acceptance in first reading so that we may adopt it in second reading. All right. So, motion? So moved. Okay, and a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? So does that mean that a, a parent can request a teacher's conference? No. This is just no longer an ASBA policy. It's in our um, staff handbook, correct? And um, in our agreements. So with that, but no, that's absolutely, it's in our parent handbook. It, they can, you can request anything that you want. Alan? Has Sorry, yeah, it's also in your policy form. Yeah. It comes about grades and report yes. cards. Yes. Uh, yes, it's in there as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's just removing something that it does redundant. Yes, yeah. Okay. Ooh, Any other questions? In that case, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5 0. Item 3 Policy Advisory Revision Consideration for First Reading. It is recommended that the Governing Board discuss and take action on, to review on first reading the following ASBA policy revision JIH student interrogations, searches, and arrests. So, again, for District yeah. Policy BG and BGC. Um, we must review and keep current your policies and recommend uh, uh, acceptance on first reading of this policy so that it may be adopted in second reading in accordance with your current policy, BGB. Okay, motion. So moved. Been moved. Second. And seconded. Any discussion or questions, ladies? I got one. So in the highlighted area, mm -hmm. so where it says that um, staff members will report any suspected crime against the person or property that is serious, that is a serious offense, involves a deadly weapon, da 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 da. And it says all, sh all such reports shall be documented and communicated to the superintendent. So at the time when this is happening, it has to be documented first and then sent to, or can they, is it saying that they can't call the police right then and there, or that it's not handled right then and there? We already have a process in place by okay. where they are to call um, the proper authorities first, okay. um, document, um, and receive documentation from all parties in observance of this issue or concern, and then that information is submitted to us shortly after that. Oh, okay. Um, and this goes back to, as you can see, um, an ARS. Okay. Um, it is actually um, now this regulation that requires this to take place and in a certain manner. So we implemented this process last school year. This just brings our policy into legal context. Correct. Yeah. Any other questions? We've already been doing this. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0. For policy revision consideration for first meeting, reading, it is recommended that the governing board discuss and take action to review on first reading the follows, following policy revisions recommended by ASBA. IHBB, Gifted and Talented Education, IIE, <laughs> Student Schedules and Course Loads, JFB, Open Enrollment, Multiple Schools, 
JJG, Contests for Students, JJJ, Extracurricular Activity Eligibility, KEB, Public Concerns and Complaints about Personnel, KEC, Public Concerns, Complaints about Instructional Programs, and LH, Relations with Education Accreditation Agencies. Once so, again, are your district policies, BG and BGC, um, we must keep your policies up to date to in order to allow for consistent action and um, decision making within the district. Administration recommends acceptance on the first reading, so the policy may be adopted on second reading in accordance with the current policy, BGB. All right. May I have a motion? So moved. Moved and second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Questions? I got some. Okay. Okay. So on... Um, I I what is that? I I E? Yes. Okay, student schedule and course load. So um on that one, each student grade nine to eleven is to take six courses. But if they are in the twelfth grade. Now we're saying that, and this was, I know this was in the handbook last year, um, that they have to take five. And so even though it's saying, so even though they have the required credits to graduate, we're saying that they have to take that fifth class, even if they don't need it. I think we don't get funding otherwise. We don't get, yeah. We, we don't get, get funding we don't get we don't, money for if that they don't have as a pupil. Problem. Right. They have to be full time pupils to be. They have to take at least five so credits. So otherwise, it, we will not get their okay. funding. So it changed from four to five? Because it used to be you only had to take four. Yeah. So um, I don't, since I've been here, it's only, it's been, it's been this, but. I'm oh, sorry, we, we did double check last year's high school handbook and it didn't say five. Yeah. So we pulled the information to make it all congruent yeah. between the policy and what we're doing now. And this can include a course at Cochise for double credit yes, and absolutely. things of that nature. Yeah, so. Absolutely. But my understanding is that the rationale behind that has to do with count them counting Fund as a pupil. Funding. Is that yes. correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. There is also a concern at the high school every year that kids in the past who were taking four would find themselves short for graduation in the fourth quarter because of this and that, mm -hmm. and not have allowed themselves the the leeway. So it's it's to avoid those last minute disappointments as well. But nine times, I mean, usually, I mean, you should be, I mean, between the the parents and the students because we're giving the students the ability and the other. Um, policy to go over what they want to do, um, they should be checking that. And I would think that if they needed, the, if it was a class, it would have to be a class that they needed for graduation for them to be short credits. Ideally. I was going to say, last year we had, I don't know, 20 to 40 kids that were short credits because we didn't pay attention to, you know, the, the fact that we failed classes and didn't retake them and had a lot of issues with that. We have a system now to work through that, but it happens and it happens all the time. But that's, this is, that's not, that's really probably about graduation requirements yeah. and that's not really what this yeah. is about. Okay. Any other questions? Um, I got another one. So JJG contest. Mm -hmm. So so student participation participation in, in contestants shall be limited to activities and events that relate. This is during the school day. Is this one of the other ones that's during the school day? It says students participate in contests shall be limited to activities and events that relate to educational needs and interests of students and do not promote private or commercial interests. The superintendent shall establish procedures and regulations governing participation in such contests. So if they if this if it's a contest that's not during school, then they could 
be in it, like pageants and stuff like that? Yeah, but that's not related to school and that's not what this policy is about. This policy is about, so for instance, our nerves. Um, that's, it's a school activity, it's related to the curriculum. Um, and so whenever they want to go and compete in a contest outside of the school district, um, we support that because it, it, it is in support of the curriculum and what they do and their interests. Okay. So if, if an outside group wanted to promote a Mr. Sexy Legs contest at Buena, for instance, that would not be allowable right. under this because it's not in support of the curriculum. Right. And it's just adding a leg just to make sure that in fact, yes. yeah. And we'll be allowing them to participate in activities. So that as much as anything, this is a protection for students from being exploited for yes. commercial purposes. Yes. Any other questions? In that case, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Passes 5-0. Item 5, discussion and action, approval of district expenditure budget revision number 2. It is recommended that the governing board discuss and take action to approve the submission of ADE of the second and final revision to the FY20 SVUSD expenditure budget. Ms. Stone. ADD's final review uh, revision submission deadline is May 15, 2020. The revision um, provided to you, and I'm going to get into questions, um, includes updated ADM and tuition figures and will be the final revision for the district's FY20 expenditure budget. The document will be submitted to ADE prior to the deadline and will be available via link from the district's website, administration recommends approval. Okay. Do I hear a motion, please? So moved. Been moved. And seconded that we approve this revision. Are there any questions? So we're not going through the PowerPoint? There's just I can go through it. She can if you'd like to, but it's it really is just making sure in because this is our very last revision that we are allowed to do. Um, that we have all of the enrollment and the ADM numbers are correct for all of our um, populations um, and our total ADM, as well as including our tuition from Palominas. So there really is not, those are, those are the changes. If you want her to go through the PowerPoint, she sure can. Well, I'm just curious, because normally we do get the PowerPoint sure. presentation. Right. It's six sides. I, and I know yeah. it's very minimal, but I did have a couple of, Small question, mm -hmm. just to make sure, sure I understand it. So we don't Absolutely. have to go through the PowerPoint. I just didn't know if we were, because we normally we do. So should I just if you could answer my questions? questions? Okay, yeah, ask them. They're just little, and so I just I wanted to, in fact, confirm that you know we've got the budget summary on slide three, um, and I know okay, and so this is current year funding. Our average daily membership changes month to month, and this is just accounting for that. The last chance that we can to get that right. Um, and it looks like we went up and then did, did we go? We went up again. We went steadily up. And okay. Kind of okay. Kind of lot, That's good news. Mm -hmm. And I know you explained this, your last presentation, but I could not remember. Why did capital go down? Or is it our student numbers are actually going down, but our weights are going up, which, so the capital is based on prior year. That's what it is. And Thank you. with the A4, there were more figures put in there from, from last year. So that went into the, um, the computation. And then if you look on change five, you can see how that is figured. It's the DAA from that A4 class. Yeah, we open to the far right mm -hmm. that under the UCO, that's where it explains the capital. Okay, but that was the explanation that I couldn't remember mm -hmm. is that um, MO is based on current year yeah. student ADM and capital funding is based on prior year. So we expect then next year, okay, setting aside all the other potential issues that could happen, but if everything was working as normally, we would normally expect capital to go up slightly to, to reflect our student counts. However, as we know, that's yes. all a big question mark. Um, well, I'm gonna give you a little answer to that. Do I wanna hear it? No. <laughs> no, didn't think so. Um, Okay, and then tuition, why why is it that we wait to this period? Is this just to make sure we get the number right? We do an estimate based on prior years and look at it. Um, with Palominas, we had a, a decrease of 10 special ed students. Okay. So we, we wait until we have um, all of the firm numbers from last year. And we, we give them an estimate, and it turns out we were very close. They're just paying slightly more than they have for the first three quarters for this final payment. 
Okay, so, so it's, kind down of, slightly. it's kind of the same thing. You do an mm -hmm. estimate of it, and mm -hmm. this is just like, this is actually how many we had and how much money we actually received. And the biggest difference, difference was just the decrease in the spread. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank mm -hmm. you. Any other questions or comments on this? In that case, all in favor of approval, say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0. Thank you. Discussion and action, completion of evaluations for professional staff. It is recommended the governing board discuss and take action regarding the requirement for professional staff evaluations for the 2019-2020 school year. Due to recent school closures, professional staff evaluations may not be completed as expected. Student data goals may be based on data from testing that is either incomplete or has been canceled. Professional staff should be held harmless to this requirement. Performance ratings for the 2019-2020 school year will be the same as the 2018-2019 ratings for professional staff were employed during the 2018-2019 school year. Professional staff who were new to the district will receive a rating based on their first observation of the year, but will also be held harmless to the student progress requirement. Employees who were placed on an improvement plan during the 2019 2000 2020 school year and considered for non-renewal will be non-renewed as long as they have had the required 45 days to improve. Those 45 days must have been met prior to the closure. Administration recommends approval. Okay. May I have a motion? So moved. Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions or discussion? I just want it in plain language, just to make sure I understand. So any existing teachers, because we can't fully complete the evaluation process, it's just going to stay with what it was last year. Mm -hmm. New teachers, you don't have that option because they're new, so you're just going to use what information you have, um, but hold them harmless from, obviously, measures that they can't meet. And and then same with the, um, uh, the, the, the last group is just either they're going to stay the same and continue if they haven't had the 45 days, and then if they have had the 45 days, then you'll continue with that. Okay. Um, the new teachers get two evaluations a year, so they had one at the beginning of the year. And and it's possible that some of them may have had two observations, um, but they but they get, don't have their student data, and so that summative evaluation can't include that. And the because the state requires us to report their ratings, mm -hmm. this is really the best way for us to go. If the state says we don't have to report ratings next year, then we won't report anything. And, and we just will have evaluations that weren't complete this year. Many so, of them have data on them, but not total completion where they can get a summative rating this year. Thank you. Any other questions? In that case, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5 0. Discussion and action Proposition 301 requirements for the 2019 2020 school year. It is recommended that the governing board discuss and take action regarding the request to hold eligible employees harmless for the completion of 301 requirements for the 2019-2020 school year. Due to the recent closure of school for the 2019-2020 school year, eligible employees may not be able to complete any outstanding parent engagement activities. It is recommended that approval of all 301 requirements be completed as soon as eligible employees complete their reflection form. This will allow all employees to be held harmless due to school closure. Administration recommends approval. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? I'd just like to say I think this is marvelous because I think all of our professional staff are far exceeding <laughs> what is required of their 301 plans mm -hmm. given what they're accomplishing. Mm -hmm. And what's the reflection form? Just it's just um, a document that they fill out in our professional development system just to kind of reflect back on what their parent engagement activities were. And then also the other part of 301 this year was to follow our code of excellence. And we're hoping that maybe they'll reflect a little bit about how they helped um, create the climate and culture that's positive for their students, for their colleagues. Um, they, we get some that write a couple of sentences and we get some that write novels. And so, uh, but we do want them to complete that so that we have some documentation that their plans were completed. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5 0. Item 8. 
Recommendation, it is recommended that the governing board approve the high school course description guide for the 2020-2021 school year. The course description guide was reviewed by the school side committees composed of counselors, principal, and administrators. Administration recommends approval. Okay, motion. So moved. Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions or comments? I greatly appreciated the summary. Wasn't that great? Yes. Yeah. And uh, the, the pointing out that these did go through the curriculum committee. Yes. And that was important to hear. Any other questions or comments? I'm also dazzled by the breadth of offerings we now mm -hmm. offer, and not just in STEM activities, although those are certainly exciting, but across the curriculum. Mm -hmm. we, we do a good job of having something for everybody. Yep. So any other comments? In that case, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0. Item nine, discussion governing board member participation in high school graduation. It is recommended that the governing board discuss the level of board member participation in the 2020 high school graduation ceremony. I reached out to Ms. Hale to see if she had some preconceived notions and she left it wide open. She concurred with me that graduation is about the kids and we admire them, we want to honor them, we want to do it in a way that puts the focus solely on the kids. That being said, graduation is scheduled for two four-hour blocks mm -hmm. if we go with the, the best case scenario, which we are hoping we will be able to mm -hmm. by May 13th and 14th, 14th and 15th. So it's a Thursday and a Friday night. Yes. And one mm -hmm. option would be for us to make up a schedule among ourselves and just have a smaller number rather than all five of us there for all nights. And given health concerns and stuff like that, we would like my suggestion is that we make up a schedule and then allow people to participate as they can mm -hmm. and let Ms. Hale know as soon as possible. Um, ladies, your input? I know you love graduation. So I do, I. I do. And since my trip got canceled, yes. I guess I will be there for the whole thing. Okay, well, okay. and are you comfortable if I if not get you to give me input for a schedule mm -hmm. and then go and, from that? And I am going to... Sit this one out. Yes, you may sit this one Thank out. You. Next year, you can do that. Hold you. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Ms. Sharon? I would like to participate, and I am open to doing that in whatever form Ms. Hale feels is okay. appropriate. Okay. You don't have to be there. would love to be there. I think one of the concerns would be just the traffic getting us in and out mm -hmm. without being disruptive. Mm -hmm. And she said we could probably work that out. But Ms. Johnson, what's your feel? Well, you know, I do know that the graduation is for kids. Yeah. And but I also them. know that the board members have always been yeah. willing to participate and be a part mm -hmm. of it. And under the circumstances, I think I'm just going to decline. Okay, I understand no that. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Well, there are three of us then that are, are, yeah, three of us who are available to, and we'll work out a schedule that three of us will participate. And so I will get that, get information from you and get it to Ms. Hale as soon as possible because I know they want to arrange where they're going to put us and all of that. And we can carpool, we can, we'll, we'll make it work because we want to be there for the kids, but it's not us. And we can always park you in back and take you through the school okay. if you're switching we, we out can, time. We could also come in opposite to the traffic flow, perhaps, if we needed to, if we needed to break it into shifts. Mm. It's pot. Well, we can yeah, work we something can figure out. that out. But um, the other thing you'll need to do because there'll be three of you there is let Alan know yes. so we can post yes. it. Well, and we may break up the yeah, eight hours, hours and there will be three of us. So yeah. we'll we'll decide that within the next day. So and right and then and and just so that you're aware, if your level of involvement is really going to depend right. on the yeah. social distancing and the rules that we have yeah. currently. Um, so when we spoke with, uh, Kelly and I spoke with her, it may be that you're sitting to the side. Yeah. It may, you know, so there's not going to be, we're not hugging. We're not holding no, hands. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> we're not, we're not doing that. And, so. and I do understand that. And I think everybody yeah, does. Whatever yeah. form we, we will wave at them. We will applaud them. Yes, we will, you know, be. And you get those little clapper hands. Oh, what a good thought. We, maybe we can park our cars and honk the horns like the staff will do. Yeah. yeah. We'll work it out. Yes. But we will work it out very soon so that no one is left hanging. Yes. We'd like to have that information yes. as soon as possible. Okay. 
Um, we are now at item 10, discussion and possible action amendment of the governing board's regular meeting calendar for the 2019-2020 school year. That's the one we're in right now. It is recommended that the governing board discuss and take possible action to amend the regular governing board meeting calendar for the remainder of the 2019-2020 school year based on the order from the governor's office to keep cl schools closed for the rest of the school year. Uh, so the district and school operations are focused on essential functions only because of the school closure. Um, additionally, the district is making every effort to adhere to health department precautionary measures to keep staff safe. Based on these conditions, the district is still able to, to accomplish the necessary business functions by having one governing board meeting a month. Uh, and so we're um, just requesting your discussion and um, action on when you would like to have that uh, and and have those meetings. So. I think one of the significant factors should be when we need to respond to budget activity and which meeting in May, for instance, would be the more appropriate one for us to meet. So if I could give you yeah, um, our feedback on that. So I would like it if we had the next, our next regular governing board meeting, May 19th, um, that would give Chris an additional um, month from now to work through a budget presentation so that when we come to you in June with the preliminary budget, you have more information than you've ever had about what that represents. Yes. So we'd like to do a budget presentation for you May 19th and then June 16th do if, if the budget documents are released from the Auditor General or the Attorney General, Aud Auditor General, um, do the preliminary budget presentation on June 16th and then the final <laughs> budget presentation and adoption on June 30th. On June 30th. Okay. So May 19th, June 16th, and June 30th for the remainder of this year. Do we need a motion then to, to amend the, okay, do I have a motion or do I have, I, let's have a motion and then discuss. I move we amend the schedule. schedule. Thank you, that word. As, as recommended. As recommended by the second. second. Questions? My only question is we do have other Pending business, and uh, we would just plan on calling any special meetings. We'll need to call a special meeting to approve the new contract for the new superintendent. But that if is it outside doesn't the work list. within that Correct. schedule. Yeah. Okay. But we still can call a special meeting. Yes, we can if, still call a special meeting. As well, you could re recommend one if we had something pressing, right? Absolutely. Okay. And and don't forget that you can do a meeting by Google. Yeah. Um, meet where you all log in, everybody else can log yeah. in, and you don't have to come right. here. So, so that good. still keeps everybody safe. Yes. Okay. Any other comments or questions, ladies? You good with those dates? Yep. So, okay. All just, 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 oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Remind me. The 19th. The 19th, yes. The June 16th, 16th and June 30th. And 30th. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes 5-0. Thank you. Um, discussion and action employment for the 2020-2021 school year. Oh, I, I missed one. I'm sorry. Discussion item 11. Discussion 2021-2022 governing board meeting schedule. It is recommended the governing board discuss the governing board meeting schedule for the 2021-2022 school year. You have a copy at your place. And is this a year off? Wait. Anyways, which are we approving the 2021-22? You're not approving it. You're just, just discussing. We're discussing, discussing, discussing it. First, for next just July. The 20, July. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm just pointing. I just these dates are 2020, 2021. Okay. Yeah, so I thank you. I just want to. Okay, I didn't catch that when I read it. Thank you. So we are actually discussing the 2020-2021. That's just hard to say. Um, so can I just, yes. um, so I just have just a couple of things that I want to bring to your attention. One is that um, we have some conflicting information on 
the website um, that indicates that the governing board will have uh, one regular meeting and then a work study session the, the third Tuesday of the month. Um, and then your policy indicates that you will have a, um, a regular meeting the first and the third Tuesday of every single month. Uh, and so in working through different calendars and um, Alan and I did put this together with all of the dates on there so that you could discuss whether there are some that you want, some that you don't. Um, but I would offer for your consideration the thought that maybe you could go to the first Tuesday as a regular meeting, the third Tuesday is a work study session if it's needed. And have just basically one meeting a year instead of two regular well, meetings. No, a month. A month. A month. A month. Yeah, one, one a year is great, but yeah. that's, not yeah, that's not allowed. That's not allowed. And this this recommendation is a general recommendation, or this recommendation is specific to pandemic concerns? As no, as just, just a regular. In general. Mm -hmm. okay. The most change in what we see on our website happened two or three years ago in an excess of an enthusiastic whatever, and then we kept finding ourselves needing to have another sure. meeting. Um, I know that there are many districts that just have one regular meeting per month. Um, well, yeah, I think, I'm not sure that we should just go to one a month. I think we should keep it up. I think it could be, and if, if we don't need it, then we don't have to have it, but I think we ought to keep it scheduled. Well, it's also something if we want to discuss with the new superintendent coming in. Well, that's what I, I agree with that, but isn't it easier to add a meeting than to cancel a regularly scheduled meeting? Or is that no, the, you no. can do that. And we can't Although wait for the new superintendent. We have to get this done before June 30th. Yeah. But I suggest we just leave it like we've been doing it. And change our website. Or change the website. Sure. So, Absolutely. okay, do I have a motion then? So. Okay. Okay, you're moving to adopt this one as presented. Right. Uh, do, are there meetings though that you do not want? Because like we just put every first and third okay. Tuesday on there and we typically have not had one the second Tuesday in, Ju in July, the second Tuesday in December. Um, so there are some that we have not had and and Holly, we did not not this year, but the previous year, we did cancel. There were a couple of yeah. meetings towards yeah. the very beginning of the year that we didn't have anything for the agenda, so we didn't. We just canceled the meeting as long as you do it within a um, there's an allowable time frame. Yeah. Okay, we're good. Okay, we're I good. guess I was just trying to think like from a person who might want to be paying attention to what we're doing. Yeah. If it if it makes more sense to have them scheduled and potentially cancel them, or if it makes more sense to schedule fewer and I just I don't know what's best but I was yeah. just trying well, to think through all the, all the time I did we had one with the first and third yeah and I don't remember canceling a lot not canceling we always had things that we needed to do but we've also um we have as Miss Glass pointed out not met the second meeting of July or the second right. meeting oh, yes. of December so, yeah we did we, we didn't have to do that so, so those are the ones that we did so we I would delete those right from the calendar. And I did Which make one is a special budget meeting though. Yeah. Is it, is it the so salary? that you won't have that this July because we'll already have done that on the 30th. Okay. 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 But um I think last year we canceled the second meeting in July because most of you were going to be gone. Right. Um, and it's kind of always been that way. And usually there is such frenzy getting ready for school that a board yeah. meeting just mm -hmm. interrupted normal processes. If we're Having the the budget meeting on the thirtieth, wouldn't it make more sense to schedule the seventh in case people do go out of town for the fourth? Yeah, yeah, we would leave that one. It's yeah. the second one in in July that you typically um, cancel. Well, I was just thinking it'd work better to cancel the seventh. Oh, you have the meeting the on the twenty first. Given the dates of our new superintendents, we might need here, we might want to keep that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I do both. Yeah, we yeah. can do both. I'd like for you to think about is that the first day of school is the fifth, your governing board meeting is the fourth. In August, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we usually don't meet like the day before the first day of school. We have that ceremony 
there's parent nights. There's all kinds yeah. of things. So, yeah. so keep the two July meetings and, and ditch the first meeting in August. Well, that that's the only one I could see really yeah. is ditching that we probably wouldn't do. And well, if we needed to schedule it. If the new superintendent or somebody wanted to have it, then we could add it back in. Yeah, we can yeah. always add back in. Yeah. And I would I would still support the deleting the second meeting in December because people tend to get frenzied and there are a million activities at the schools. Oh, yeah. So the 15th, take that time. I think even when it's been on our calendar in years past, we have ended up canceling it. Where, when does spring break come on the next? Uh, May, uh, March, March 15th March. through the 19th. So I just moved okay, that to the right following week. Oh, so that's already been done. It's already yeah. done. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Did the same thing for um, uh, fall break in October yeah. okay. and then spring break. Okay. And, and, and the discussion was to keep them as two regular meetings yeah. rather than a regular. We can always adjust. And then we can always adjust. Do we need a motion? Yeah. I, oh. actually, I like we have a motion. Don't we, we have a motion. Oh, we, do. we do to discuss it. So, okay. Do I so, need to make the motion sure. for what we yes. discussed? Yes, okay. please. I'd like to make a motion that we schedule next year's regular governing board schedule to be two regular governing board meetings, the first and typically third, or how do I say third. The first and third, third Tuesday of the month with the exception of removing the meeting on August 4th, removing the meeting on December 15th, and then making adjustments to the week that we meet um, in October and March mm -hmm. to, to not fall on nicely the holiday. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's my motion. Nicely done. Second. And it's been seconded. It's been moved and seconded, what Holly said. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5 0. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Um, item 12 discussion and action employment for the 2020 2021 school year for support staff employees. It is recommended the governing board re-employ the support staff employees as recommended by district administration for the 2020-2021 school year. The governing board, board can employ support staff employees for the maximum of one year. Um, I just want to make one addition to this. Ms. Stone just told me uh, Sarah Tavares was missed off of this list. I apologize. I hope that's the only one. Um, administration recommends approval. Do I hear a motion, please? So moved. Been moved. Second. And seconded. Any discussion or question? I got a question or just a comment. So if something happens and we don't start the school year, will we have to relook at that then? Yes, and I'll talk about that during the information section. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, I had already clarified with you, and I appreciate the information, but as a new board member, I'm still kind of wrapping my head around the fact that this is a because these are contracts, they're that's not why they're work agreements. Work agreements. And they're at will. They're at will employees. Okay. Okay. I, well, I, when people move positions or are promoted or reassigned or terminated or re they resign, that's always on the personnel action. Yeah. This is about people working for us the next year yeah. in whatever form that takes. And then when there's new positions, that's a whole separate thing. Yeah, I'm just saying, it's, for me, it's always difficult. I'm like, what's happening here? Yeah. Um, oh, and I just wanted to, I appreciate you giving me that clarification because I get, it's hard to understand the big picture when it's broken up into these weird pieces. So. And because we often just look at teacher and admin contracts, it is a different paradigm. Okay. So I understand that. Okay. Any other questions? In that case, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0. Thank you, Ms. Eagle. Okay, item 13, discussion and action acceptance of the district allocation of Taylor grazing fees. This is my favorite item tonight. <laughs> it is recommended that the governing board discuss and take action regarding acceptance of the district allocation of Taylor grazing fees in the amount of $58.38 as provided by the Cochise County School Superintendent's Office for fiscal year 2019-2020. This is your item, Ms. Glass. So administration is rec uh, requesting the distribution of the district's allocation of tra uh, tailored grazing fees. These funds will be used to purchase additional um, instructional aids, furniture, equipment, and supplies, 
that will enhance student achievement. In addition, the funds will cover expenses in association with intervention programs that are not covered by Fund 13 and for PSAT testing. Um, it costs us more to account for this money than we get. Administration recommends approval. Thank you. <laughs> Do I hear a motion, ladies? So, so moved. It's been moved Second. and seconded that we accept the Taylor grazing fees in the amount of $58.38. Any um, discussion? I just think that would buy a lot of supplies. <laughs> in another time. <laughs> in another time. Exactly. Okay. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Passes 5 0, and we are grateful. And all I know is if Chris can make all of that happen with $58, she's genuinely <laughs> a wizard. We know she's superwoman. It's okay. <laughs> we want to see careful accounting, though. So I think it's $437 right now. We're kind of saving until we. Oh, okay. One whole thing. <laughs> One whole thing. Thank yeah. you. Okay, information and discussion items. Anything? Yes, ma'am. Please. Uh, so I wanted to kind of share with you the state of um, education according to um, our budget and some of the guidance that we're receiving. Um, so uh, we, I just found out this afternoon that the legislature is going to reconvene on May 1st and end the session without further conversation from my understanding about our budget. Uh, they passed what they termed a skinny budget um, and um, removed special education funding, um, removed the... You mean the increase? Mm -hmm. Okay, not... Not all of the funding. No, just, just all of that. that, that the one okay. proposal of, if you don't know, they had um, to fix special education funding um, through the weighted amounts. Yeah. Um, removed that, uh, removed the, uh, lessened the um, district additional assistance percentage that we would be made whole again towards, uh, and, and, and removed quite a few other things um, that will affect us. Uh, so, um, but they're going to come back on May 1st and end the session. Um, we are uh, also received, uh, Chris and I spend a lot of time on <laughs> webinars trying to figure our lives out. Um, we uh, have been listening to, um, you know, we, we were given 3.5% for the five, towards the 5% um, 20 by 20 raise. Um, 3.5 percent is supposed to come out of M and O, and then um, the 1.5 is going to be put into the classroom site fund, and teachers can then get a stipend, but it cannot be added to the base to increase their pay. Um, so that's a problem um, because it's that's not what was agreed upon, um, but it, it's what we have to live with at this point. Um, we will be recommending to you um, that we give all staff 3.5% raise across the board um, and that the teachers do get the one point, the professional staff get the 1.5% out of the classroom site fund to supplement their, um, their uh, salary and wages. Uh, what we're being advised to do, um, and I've asked uh, Chris, we've been doing this all along, in case you didn't know, is to be very conservative yep. in our spending, to put absolutely every single penny that we have available into the reserves. It used to be 4% was the cap for reserves. It is no longer a cap. We can put as much money as we possibly can into those reserves. Do I recommend you keep it there? No, because once the Auditor General gets a whiff that you've yeah. got $2 million in your reserves, they're going to say, you don't need this funding. So we want to make sure that we're spending it. But for this year, um, we're going to put every single bit of money that we can have and that we have left into reserves because it is a, it's, it's very unknown as to what will happen. It's projected that... Um, we won't come back to school, that we'll only be hiring back essential staff, everyone else will be furloughed until we actually bring school back in session. 
um, into the classrooms, into the brick and mortar school buildings. Um, our wage agreements, uh, again, allow us the opportunity to um, have a reduction in force. It's not a reduction in force for um, support staff. That's not what we want. We're hoping that we can put as much money in to reserves so that we can um, continue to employ everybody like we are now. Uh, but it is, it really is um, an unknown. So um, we have been operating um, throughout this whole entire thing with very little information and doing the very best that we can do. Uh, and it's because I've got Kelly and Terry and Deb and Chris um, Benito and David and Jim all to and Alan to help me work through all of these different things um, that we're able to really provide a great education um, for our kids and make sure that everybody feels good about what they're doing um, for work. Um, but I am going to caution you to be as um, conservative as possible as you move into next school year, just because we do not know what uh, is going to happen. Um, I have shared, we share, I shared this morning in, in cabinet, I don't think that we should overreact and not give the raise. Some districts have completely taken the raise away and are just now giving teachers stipends and staff stipends. We don't want to do that. We, we've got time. Um, we can always adjust. We're going to have to send out contract addendums um, anyway when the budget is, we finally get everything taken care of. So I just would caution you to, one, not overreact, but also we have to be really careful with our, with our m and spending. So um, that's where we are at this point in time. Um, it's, it can be very different every single day. Uh, and so it just takes a lot to stay on top of this. So we're just, um, every day we have to just pay attention, but that's my advice to you. And that's uh, at this point in time, what we're doing. Thank you. Can I ask a couple of clarifying questions? Mm -hmm. The 4% cap and carry forward, I, I thought, was that a requirement before that it's it been removed? Been. Is it just for a year or yeah. it's just been removed? It's been removed. Okay. Okay. Um, and then, the, so in the skinny budget, the skinny budget included the 3.5% in increase of it, that that amounts to that. Okay. Yes. Okay. So the 3.5% and the 1.5%, even though it's not in MNO, was included in the skinny budget. Yes. And so it's not included in the skinny budget, it, which is now our budget. Yeah. Because they're not planning. We don't expect them. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know, but we're not expecting them to okay. come back into session. So all the good stuff that was happening, the yes. increase in special education weighted amounts to cover, what was that called? It's special education funding gap. So that's yes. not included. Um, so is district additional assistance, is the decrease still getting smaller? It's just not fully restored? Or are we kind of hovering at where we're at with our current reduction, which is like $800,000? It just won't be fully restored, but the projected um, restoration was supposed to be complete at, yes. um, for this next year, but it will not be. Wait, was that the original plan? Mm -hmm. And then they were going to speed it up, and now it's mm -hmm. not even to the original plan? Oh, okay. And I guess I just wanted to add, I, I appreciate all the information and the thought and the work that goes into this. I, it's just, I'm remembering back during the economic downturn of 08, 09, 010, uh, when um, things were dire economically, that sometimes you were told one thing at the beginning of the year and then mid year, they just mm -hmm. say, never mind, we're taking that back. So I, I hear your um, advice to be very um, just. To just move forward cautiously because they can throw us big right. curveballs. And the um, right now the projection is that there will be a considerable recession, um, and that <coughs> because of the lack of tourism in the state, they're already projecting a considerable budget deficit, um, and that is we are not going to be untouched by that no. at all, unfortunately. So. And the bulk of our state 
high, so to speak, is sales tax. Yes. People aren't shopping. Our right. state relies heavily on sales tax, which yes. always puts us in this position when the economy. So there's a lot to pay attention to and a lot to um, know. And yes, I mean, sometimes I'll call Chris and ask her if she heard the same thing I heard. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it, can that possibly be correct? Um, so it's um, sometimes it's, it's different from meeting to meeting. We appreciate your leadership and your expertise, all of you. And, and those who are not here tonight, please convey our appreciation as well because we know just how hard this is. And we'll do our best. Do our best. All right. Um, information items, request for future agenda items. I think so. In that case, try her a motion to adjourn. What the are, 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 are we going to schedule another meeting? We don't. No, no, no. Okay. We can do that. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So, so Second. Moved and seconded to adjourn at 710. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Passes 5 0. Thank you all very much. Oh, oh yeah, I have to get the sign. I